Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Etsy Table Studio. It is 10 after 6, and I've been awake since 2.30. <laughs> um, I wanted to, this is left over from yesterday, I didn't do this this morning. Uh, I wanted to come on and talk about stamps. And I want to show you some things that I've been playing around with. Yesterday, I carved uh, two stamps, made an adjustment on another one, and I want to show you what, excuse me, what I did. All right, so because my situation with the microphone and doing voice voiceovers is <laughs> precarious at best, um, I've just been playing around with the stamps and not really recording what I'm doing. So there's a couple of things in here you're not going to see, but I'm going to show you the end result. Oh, uh, let's see. Where do I start? First, let me start by showing you um, papers from stamps that I carved in some videos you may or may not see. This was um, paper that was stamped with inks, ink pads like Stays On, Memento. I don't know what the other brands are. I think it's just Stays On and Memento Lux. And these are, there are one, two, three, four different, four different stamps on here to make this, make this paper. There's the original stamp that is this square right here. Then there is a small, there's a gap in between these where I used a very small little stamp I had from years ago. The inside ring here, which overlaps on the, on two stamps, three stamps, is a little swirly stamp that I carved a few years ago. The piece that's stamped in the middle here is yet another stamp from a few years ago. So you don't have to limit yourself to just one stamp. You can take a combination of stamps and make paper. I have scanned all of these so that I don't have to keep doing this because to be honest with you, it takes a while to stamp a whole eight and a half by 11 sheet. This one is two stamps is two stamps so it's the original green block here and then that little swirly stamp a different shade of green in the middle this one I did a while ago but this is not stamping but I did scan this paper because I really like this one this is watercolor where I took uh, let's see what did I use I used some kind of end of something I think it was a tape the plastic thing for a, a tape and stamped it on here and then watercolored and spritzed it. This is not made from rubber stamps. This is a rubber stamp paper that I made the other day. Um, this is a roll-off paper and I really liked the different colors that were in it, the way they got they were dark and then turned to a yellow orange and then I did red down the side. So I took a, another stamp that I carved and just took black ink and stamped on top of the jelly plate. I mean the jelly um, print. I like the way this looks. I, I find it rather interesting. This is a stamp that started out as an idea to make like a pinwheel so that I could when I, when I carved it, I carved all of these, the red spots out so where it's completely clean. And then I carved the green area and just put lines through it. Well, I stamped this and after I got to looking at it, I decided I really did not like the green, uh, the green in it, the green sections. So I took the stamp and I carved out the green. Okay, so I showed that to you. Where's the rest of it? Um, de -de -de -de. So I didn't, I, I didn't like the way it turned out. So I recarved the stamp. And did I stamp any of it? 
I know I did. <laughs> I just don't know where I put it. Anyway, so I took all that out. So now what I have is a stamp. Well, I don't know where I put the paper. Bowie. Um, it's just a plain stamp that has divides in it. And when you stamp it, you can put color in all the places instead of just where the red is, which are totally blank. You can see the blank spots are dug in deeper. And then the ones that I redid are up higher because I, I didn't go down deep enough, but this stamp is getting thinner by the minute. So this was what it looked like, and now it's going to look like something totally different. This is one that I did in a past video where I stamped the whole stamp on there with an orange pad. This is a stamp from previous years that I, I liked, and I thought I should do a... I think it's like an... I think it's an inch and a quarter by not quite an inch, three quarters of an inch. It's it's really small. I mean, it doesn't look that small here because I'm sticking up close to the camera, but it is pretty small stamp. I like the way the stamp looks. Then I carved this one the other day. That I'm not really happy with the way it looks once it's stamped, but I think it'll look better on a jelly plate. I, I like the way it looked on the jelly plate. So stamping this one with ink pads may not be an option and I might alter the stamp in some way or another. I don't know for sure yet. This one is one that I'm not exactly thrilled about. Although it doesn't look bad on ink, but again, it's one of those that might look better on the jelly plate. And here's another one. I really like this one. This is two stamps. So it's the square here and then it's is it this stamp? It's a stamp similar to this one that I carved a while ago out of an eraser from Dollar Tree. Then I took double stick tape and some round wood things that somebody gave to me and I put double stick tape on it and it does move around but you know it's good enough. I don't want to glue it on here because what if I want to change it? So I just put double stick tape on it and just stamped with a different color, contrasting color. Okay, so that's those. Then I got an idea. Oh, help us. I got an idea to carve another stamp, and I know I didn't film it. I did it with four circles, and then at the last minute, I put the lines on there, which I think was a mistake, but, you know, you salvage where you can. So here, is what it looked like. My poor stamp pad is running out of ink, but here's what it looked like when I first did it. This is what it looked like when I dug out the centers. Okay, so then I stamped it in black. Then I took, where'd I put it? This stamp, which is a previously made stamp from years ago where I, I tried to carve a flower on one side and didn't like it so I flipped it over and made the best of it on the other side. So then I took, well maybe I can show you, um, I took these, uh, do I buck stamp pad? I don't know how well this will do because my stamp pad's running out and I don't have any more backup re-inkers for it. All right so then I took this and I stamped Oh, that looks better than I thought it would. I stamped these like this to cover up how ugly those were. And then I colored them in with a Posca pen to see what it would see what it would look like. I think this one I stamped like that and I did it with a green watercolor pencil and used watercolor on it. The thing is, is that the black ink that I used, I think I used a Memento ink on here. What was it? Let me see. Oh, it was color box. And it is not water, waterproof or water resistant. So when I did, I didn't realize that. 
when I did the um, watercolor to activate it when I after I drew it in with the pencil, it made black marks in here. And then I realized that that was not the best choice of inks. So I need to stick with my stays on. So there's that, that stamp I carved that you there's no video for. Probably a good thing. <laughs> okay, let's see what else did I do. Oh, um, I made this stamp. Geez, I'm trying to think how many years ago I carved this stamp. I think it was in 2019. 2018. I honestly don't remember. So let me show you what it looks like when it's stamped plain. Where's that stamp pad? Here it is. It's a very small stamp, kind of insignificant. So this is what it looks like when it's stamped. I really like this stamp. Okay, so there's that. That's the whole stamp. So I thought, well, I, maybe I could gussy up some of the others like I did this round one with the, you know, the other stamp to kind of make the circles a lot better. So I thought, okay, let's play with this. So what I did was I took a piece of paper and I stamped it in four directions. So I stamped it top, bottom, and the sides. And I thought, well, that kind of makes a circle. So let me keep doing it. So I stamped it so that, you know, these met. And then this way. And then, then I did all the four ways. Then I took a Posca pen and colored them all in. And I really like the way it looks. I just think it's cool. Such a small little stamp for me made kind of a big impact. And just because you have trash stamps left over doesn't mean you can't use them for something. So first I did this. Then I thought, well, let me, let me see what it looks like if I put two sides together. So then I did this. I took the stamp and I stamped it this way and then turned it around so that the two points would meet these other two points like this. Then I took a Posca pen, and I colored it in. It's just a trash stamp. It was leftover rubber that I carved one year, and I just never use it. It was in the drawer, and while I was digging for something else, I found this, and I thought, oh, let me see what this looks like. I stamped that, and went, oh, that looks better than I thought it did. So I did several variations when I did this one. It didn't print it out. Uh, portrait it did at landscape. Nevertheless, it's the same thing. This is just a photocopy of this one. Just turn the wrong direction. So it should be like this, but it didn't, you know, you could do it like this, but you're only going to get a small portion of it. So since I like that so much, oh wait, here's another one. This is the first one that I did with yellow and the Posca pen. Then I thought, oh, you know, I really like the way that looks. So let me play around with it with this. Okay, so this wasn't as appealing to me as I thought it would be. So this is, this here is this stamp turned this way. And then it's this stamp done on top of the square here. And then I filled it in with Poscas. I'm not crazy about this design, but you know, I just wanted to play with it. So here's another one I played with. And I'll explain these others in a second. All right, so then I had these. And I really like the way this looks. And I think when I carved this, I was thinking about the Fleur de Lis. So I whipped out some rubber. And I carved this. All right, I got to show you the whole thing. Like this. Okay, again, this is based on the Fleur de Lis. So I stamped I stamped this with the uh, the whole stamp here, this thing. Okay? And I took it and I I was trying to figure out a way to make a a large design out of the little stamp by repeating it and turning it different directions. This did not go as 
the way I thought it would. But I, I got a nice design this way. But I can't, it doesn't fit well together in other directions. Nevertheless, I just like the way it looks. It'll make a great background for something. No big deal. When I got to looking at it, I thought, you know, that's really funny because I like the round portion here better than I like the, this portion here. So I took the X-Acto knife and I did some surgical moves and I cut it in half. Okay, so let's see, where where's the stuff? So this is the bottom. This is this. Just turned this way and then this way. And I really like the way this looks. This makes a great edging for something. Or, you know, if you're going to sew it and sew it on the book, you can cut it right down the middle here and you end up with two side pieces. I, I like the way this looks. I took the purple Posca and colored inside the hole. So I thought that was a really cool design just by cutting that in half. All right, so then I took this part and I stamped it the same way I did the circles. I took this and then flipped it around to do this. And I like the way this looks too. That's just another repetitive design. I don't think that I can make it work this way I mean, I could, but I really would like for it to fit more snugly in there. I don't know if I have another stamp I can use in there like that, but eventually I think I would probably just do it like this and then, you know, the whole page. So I haven't done one with the whole page yet with turning it. These are just two extras that are photocopies of designs that I did. So when you carve, save all your stuff. And even if, you know, I liked it this way, but once I printed it out, I thought, well, I think it would look really cool if it was two separate pieces. And I was very pleased with the way that it looked when it was separate. I like the way it looks. I think it looks really cool once you, once I cut it apart. I do, where's the other part? I do like it where it's cut apart. Where's the other one? Well, fooey. Oh, this is the other one. It's under there. So start out as this, and then stamp this, then stamp this. So I got three different looks with the one stamp, which pays off dividends that I didn't expect. Um, I'm going to try as best I can to insert two photos of my stamp supply drawers. I have two of the large um, or the wide IKEA cabinets. And um, I have two drawers full of stamp supply stuff. So I thought I would take a photo to show you what they look like. And I will try if I can figure out how to use this new editing thing to insert the photo into the movie so you can take a look at it. So I have been carving, but with all my technical issues, I have not been recording everything that I carve because it just... <laughs> It's not been going well with the audio. So I thought I would do this instead. I hope everyone is having a wonderful holiday season. I celebrate Christmas, sorta. <laughs> um, so Merry Christmas to those who celebrate. Happy Hanukkah to those who celebrate Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and all the different holidays that everybody celebrates right around here. I hope you have a good one and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.